Sunday is Christmas Eve, and we're going to meet, and we're going to start the New Testament on Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. We finished Malachi, and on your lesson outline, you have what uh, we learned last week, that Jesus identifies John the Baptist who came in the spirit and power of Elijah, and then Malachi claims that people rob God when they do not honor him with their lives and their possessions. He even offers to try him in this and see if you're not blessed. And we are very grateful for your financial support. And the second coming of Christ will be like a refiner's fire, purifying the earth, purging mankind of sin and wickedness and he'll bring righteousness into daily practice along with God's blessings and joyous love for one another and then page two pray for the nation something we need to do on a regular basis and the national leader the director of the Central Intelligence Agency now there's one guy you want to stay friendly with I remember back when Don and I were operating our health club business uh, here in Dallas, and my uh, secretary paged me and said, there's a man here to see you. I said, who is it? She said, he's with the FBI. <laughs> and about a minute later, she said, there's another man here to see you. I said, 
who is that? And she said, he's with the CIA. So you know what kind of thoughts go through your mind. I mean, gosh, uh, I'm going to get raided here or something. But it just turned out that a guy that used to work for me had applied for a job with the CIA, and they were doing the background checks. But uh, I can tell you, I got that little quiver in the pit of my stomach listening to that. And then the scripture, give and it'll be given to you in good measure. One of the first people I met in Dallas at a Prestonwood Baptist service where they have everybody stand up and turn around and say hello. And it was Mary Kay Ash. And Mary Kay was very generous to that church, but she always wore this little shovel, kind of a gold pin. And she used to say, that's my little shovel. I shovel what I give to God in that little shovel, and he <coughs> gives back in his huge shovel. So... It's a great verse, Luke 6, 38. And then I wanted to give you some scriptures quickly concerning the birth of Jesus. One of the reasons I'm convinced that the Bible is the word of God is that ancient prophecies come true. And they come true exactly. Jesus said the scriptures must, must be fulfilled. And Isaiah wrote in 750 B.C., so 750 years before the birth of Christ, he wrote, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin, in uh, the original language, the the is exclusive, exclusive. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel or God is with us. And then for us, unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting <laughs> Father, Prince of Peace, the great description of our Lord and Savior. And then he wrote, there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. Now, Jesse hadn't been born yet either, but that's David's father. King David was Jesse's youngest son, the greatest earthly king, right, Sally? Yes. And he was his youngest son that sent the prophet Samuel anointed from the stem of Jesse and a branch will grow out of his roots. Jesus is in the line of King David. He is the Lion of Judah. And then Jeremiah in 587 B.C. Behold the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth and then in the new testament luke and the angel the angel gabriel came to mary and said the holy spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you therefore also that holy one who is to be born will be called the son of god and mary answered and said may it be done just as you said she was a willing servant and then the prophet micah this is the one that really amazes me because this was written in 700 bc and he says but you bethlehem Ephratah." now what's so interesting about that is there were two Bethlehem's in Israel. He predicts the exact one where Christ is to be born. Bethlehem, Ephratah. Though you are a little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings on are from old, from everlasting. 
Christ. And then Matthew, which we're going to start studying next Sunday. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother, Mary was betrothed to Joseph, engaged. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit, and Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example. Well, a public example back then was to be stoned to death. Not like today where you get some gossip. Back then they actually stoned them to death. Was minded to put her away secretly, quietly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for what is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she'll bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, which we just quoted, Isaiah 7, 14, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God is with us. And then Galatians. The apostle Paul writes, When the fullness of time had come, Christ came at the perfect time. Could you imagine if he had come and MSNBC was covering it? Um, it would be <laughs> God's timing is perfect. It's not our timing. It's his. Fullness of time had come. God sent forth his son, born of a woman under the law, to redeem those who were under the law the law of sin and death, that we might receive adoptions as sons. For sons and daughters of God through Jesus Christ. And then the great Luke story. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered so they could be taxed. Back then they did the same thing they do today. When they want to raise more money, they raise your taxes. But in God's perfect time, to fulfill what Micah prophesied, this had to take place because Joseph and Mary had to go to Bethlehem to be registered in their city of origin. This census first took place when Quirinius was governing Syria and most of Judea, so all went to be registered. Everyone to his own city. Joseph went up from Galilee <coughs> out of the city of Nazareth to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Now we studied that Jerusalem was also called the city of David because he built the city. But David was born in Bethlehem, and Bethlehem means city of bread, the bread of life. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger because there was no room in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before him, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Interesting, God picked shepherds to make this announcement. Shepherds were basically persona non grata back then. People didn't like the way they smelled. They didn't like the way they dressed. And so they were never invited to the Class A parties. But the angel came to them and said, Don't be afraid, for I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people for born unto you this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign 
You'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude. Doesn't say how many, but it could have been the two thirds of the angels that didn't fall with Satan, one third, announcing this to the shepherds. And they said, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill to men. And I imagine they were quite amazed to see that in the middle of the night happening. So that's our lesson for today. Donna, I'm going to have you come up. I want to thank my wife personally. She worked very, very hard on uh, getting everything set up this morning, getting all these extra gifts. And uh, I got three of them. See